further ado, we'll call the January 11th, 2020 City Committee of the Whole meeting to order. The clerk will call the roll. Arevalo? Present. Brereton? Here. Flurry? Present. Frank? Here. Freeman? Here. McGee? Here. Porter? Here. Radcliffe? Here. Snow? Here. Stevens? Here. Ten present? Thank you. Under public comment this evening, uh, Jeff Carlisle has asked to speak uh, on impact fees. Please approach the podium. You have the floor. Thank you. I uh, promised you last time I spoke about impact fees. Uh, when the county made some decisions of what they were trying to do with impact fees, I promised to come back and give you a report of what we did. Um, with the help of uh, Neely Erickson and the principals of the impact fees, which are the park district, the conservation district, and the school district, there was about a 30, 45 day of discussion and communication with these departments and districts. So we plan to suspend for two years the impact fees. It's not a plan, it's we uh, will vote it on the uh, upcoming uh, next Wednesday, not this Wednesday, but the following Wednesday meeting. The plan was to suspend for two years. One year was not enough time to conduct a study and notify builders, so we opt to go to a second year, so we'll give you enough, enough time for a study, a review. We'll check, uh, we'll be able to discover the builders who have paid fees, or we'll be able to discover planned or unplanned works that have been completed before the suspension. We'll look for the land that uh, went to the conservation districts that need to be uh, reviewed in lieu of impact fees, looking at the formulas of the impact fees and the structure, and looking at other counties and similar activities. Uh, we're also gonna look at the public services. Is it an increase or is it not an increase? So we're looking at all these things and uh, we're gonna bring up a study the nice thing about this thing, everybody got together. Everybody had an input, and we, we made a decision because of the details that we got from everybody. Uh, I talked to the, uh, one of the principal writers of this before he passed away. Uh, Jerry said he was okay with the suspension, but don't throw the baby out with the bathwater, which I agree. And I appreciate the time, and I wanna say, if you want to come to the county board meetings, please do. Um, I will give these to my uh, counterparts in my district, which is uh, Matt and Mike, and they can uh, disseminate to the rest of the groups and give it to everybody else. But I, I please, come to our county board meetings. We enjoy your input. We'd like to see it and hear it. Thank you. Thank you. Mr. Carlisle. Under public forum this evening, we have none. Under reports of officers, boards, and special committees, under number one, building, planning, and zoning, unfinished business, there is none to discuss this evening. Under building, planning, and zoning, new business, under A, planning and zoning department, there is an update. Ms. Gina Del Rose will deliver the update. As stated last month, this is kind of the slow period for cases. Um, obviously, we have the special use that just got approved for tomorrow's plan commission. There's a variance. However, for February's plan commission, I already have six cases on the agenda, um, and tomorrow's the last day to turn in. So that will be a pretty heavy caseload, and all six of those cases will be moving forward to city council. Um, for those that may not realize, um, tomorrow's variance, when we have variances, that only goes to planning commission. It doesn't move forward to city council, so you don't see those cases. You see all the other ones, though. Um, no site plans or downtown overlay official reviews. I have been talking to a couple downtown business owners, met with them out on the sidewalk. They are getting ready to do some facade renovations. Um, I let them know that we do have the facade grant program and historic preservation has a grant program. Um, neither one of them really want to wait for those grant cycles. They kind of want to start working as soon as the weather breaks. So 
So come March, I'd expect to see a couple of our buildings getting facelifts, which is always a good thing. Um, I did complete the Courthouse Square grant closeout form. It was about four inches of paperwork that the state wanted to get our money back. So that was all sent out about a week and a half ago. So hopefully they accept it. Um, the Ruskin Arc website that I talked about before with that, I have been talking to them about pricing um, schemes so that we can take over that website that was started to add more survey information, um, public art information, other information, and basically use it as a tourism website. Um, <coughs> before we used to use Northern Illinois Tourism, that is now basically defunct. So there's really nothing helping us with our tourism. So the goal is this website that the Lakota Group started to build that up into um, a functioning website for tourism in the area. So hopefully I'll have that information for next month. Um, and that is really about it. Continuing to go back and forth on the comp plan. Oh, also I sent out four extension letters for special uses. As you know, special uses, they null and void after a year if they're not started. So for them, their expiration dates were coming up pretty soon. So I sent the uh, applicants reminders that they need to come in for their extensions or they risk losing their special use. So I'd expect in a month, you guys will have those on your agendas as well to look at. That's it. Questions for Ms. Gilrose? Yes. Right. No, Steve. no has a question. Just a moment, please. Did I hear you say Just a that moment. the um, tourism thing went defunct? Yes, Northern Illinois Tourism. Um, I, I don't know all the ins and outs. I believe they were losing funding from several places, and it was a small operation. So they closed their doors and kind of merged with another entity that wasn't giving the benefits that um, Northern Illinois Tourism was giving. It wasn't really helping us in any way, so. Does that answer Thank your you. question? Uh, you said tomorrow at Mike's meeting that whatever. Variance. Variances, don't, what kind of variances don't come to the city council? So, okay, great. I can talk about planning stuff. <laughs> so variances are when you want a deviation from your bulk regulations. Square footage, height, setback, something with a measure to it. So if someone wants to build a house too close to the lot line, a sign too tall, um, a fence too tall, stuff like that, it's a variance. So it still has the same findings of fact that the commission has to agree on. And variances don't have conditions. It's a straight up yes or no. And to get a variance, you have to have a hardship. It can't be, well, I want to, or it's cheaper if I do it this way. It has to be your lots of regular shape. There's a steep slope, so you can't build your garage where it's supposed to be because of the slope, you gotta move it over. Something that makes your property unique and different. Um, I don't wanna talk about too much of this one because there's a public hearing, you shouldn't discuss things out of the public hearing, but for this one, the property is only, it's about 3,000 square feet too small, and it's not a rectangle, it's all kinds of, you know, weird angles which makes it harder to meet those setbacks and stuff like that so variances are only reviewed at plan commission special uses are when it's a land use that sometimes works sometimes doesn't so it gets that case-by-case -case review that still has a public hearing at the plan commission and then voted on here subdivisions which is the platting of property that gets reviewed at the plan commission because plan commission also acts as um, the comprehensive plan reviewer and they want to make sure that the subdivisions match the comprehensive plan doesn't require a public hearing so therefore neighbors aren't notified it's not on the paper and then you guys vote on it and then there's text amendments when you change the code again public hearing at plan commission but you guys vote same with rezonings when you change the designation of a property Pub plan commission acts as the public hearing body but you guys have the ultimate vote Okay, but like stuff like if I want to build my garage too close to the property line doesn't come to here in the council. Correct. It's yep. just with the committee. Okay, that's all. Yep. I so think. sometimes you guys may not see me at city council because there's no cases to present to you guys. That doesn't mean there wasn't a plan commission meeting though. Yep. Alderman Porter. Yeah, you were talking about the tourism going defunct. Uh, is that related to the Route 20 uh, 
historic route or is that completely no, separate? That was one of the reasons why we got interested in the Route 20 because Northern Illinois tourism wasn't there anymore and we were looking, instead of just saying, oh, no more tourism, we were looking for different ways to help get our tourism stuff restarted. So when it was at the Boone County Fair property owner that lives on 20 was talking about how they just heard about Route 20 and I was like, oh, you know, let me look that up looked into it, thought that would be a great start to get our tourism going back up again, so we joined them. And now with this Ruskin Arc website, we're seeing that as another potential to help with things as well. So we're, instead of depending on a tourism agency, we're looking um, at other ways to, to get that marketing in. Yep. Any other questions for Ms. Del Rose? Thank you, appreciate it. Next up under building department, we also have an update. Uh, Director of Countrymen, are you still there? I'm here, can you hear me? We can hear you, please proceed. Okay, uh, for the month of December, we issued 46 permits for a value of construction at $630,000 uh, with the total permit fees of just over $10,000 that included 12 commercial and 34 residential. For the year, we issued 1,059 permits for a value of construction at $15,884,081. With an enterprise zone discount of 15 for $31,000 total permit fees paid to the city were $235,289.33. That included 131 commercial industrial permits <clears throat> and 928 residential. On the property maintenance side, we have closed 13 violations in December and have 10 open. For the year 2020, we had 915 code violations and 82 still pending. One court case, I'm sorry, three court cases, two resolved, one pending, nine home occupation permits, and 33 violation tickets paid. I'll entertain any questions. Questions for the director? No, I have a question. Snow, please sure. proceed. Um, of that dollar amount that you had um, in the value for um, increase in value of the properties or their value of the... Uh, um, Construction? Yeah. And I am not going to try to pin you down, but is there a significant amount that would actually wind up technically on as new stuff that would eventually wind up hitting the tax rolls as far as property tax appraisal? We do send the copy to the tax assessor when they when we issue a permit for value of construction per permit. Now if the tax assessor uses that as an increase in uh, value of the property, I. I don't have an answer to that, um, but a lot of our permit fee schedules for new construction is based on the value of construction, and that that's that's the basis for the cost of the permit. Sure. Does okay. Thank you. Thank question? you. Yep. Any other questions for the director? Okay. So actually, it was. It was if I can add a little more, it was that's a pretty good year for uh, circumstances being what they are. Um, for you know a quarter of a million dollars in, in revenue brought into the city under permit fees, um, we had six new single-family residences. Um, one hundred hundred and thirty-one commercial industrial permits and. 928 residential so that, that, that actually it's a pretty good year given the circumstances we're facing right now okay anybody else have a question for the director 
Okay, thank you, uh, Director Countryman. Next up, we have Public Works under Unfinished Business. Under A, we have the Stormwater Utility Implementation Phasing, which is tabled and will stay on the table. Under, yes. Uh, I'd like to make a motion on this since it's um, up on the uh, agenda here for tonight. Since we're getting close to an election, I'd like to make a motion that we put this on the next election if it's not too late uh, for a public referendum. Attorney Drellin? You've already passed the filing deadlines to place things on the referendum for the next elections. I believe so. I'd have to go back and check that to make sure, but I thought that expired in November. I'd, I'd like to go back to and check it. that one. Yeah, I'd like to check it and get it on there if we can, as I think it's something that the taxpayers need to make the decision on. I can let you know next committee meeting if it's still available. But I honestly don't think it is because they just did the, they just handled the objections for up at the county for the consolidated election in April for trustees of the fire district number three. So if they've already heard the objections on, it's too late to get the, the filing in place. But I will go ahead and give you what those dates were for you next committee meeting. And an, yeah. an addendum to that, if I may, there's never even been the presentation of the program yet to the council. And so I don't know how you put it on a referendum if it's not ever been presented in all of its phases and steps to the council for the council to make a decision if they want to pass it on to a referendum. So I, I would think cart comes before the horse, but I'll have Attorney Drella, you can advise me on that too. Well, the well, council can put pretty much any advisory referendum they wish to on a ballot. Um, and, and quite frankly, I've, I don't recall all of what has been presented to the council, but I don't believe that we've even received uh, a phasing proposal or total cost for the project to the city council at this point. So I don't know how much you'd be asking the community to spend in an advisory referendum. Brent's got his hand up. Right. Yeah, just just a quick update on where we're at, where we left off. The next phase of the stormwater utility discussion would be the public information phase, which was a, a series of uh, public information meetings to disseminate that information to the public on the parameters, on, on what the projects or the program would include, what it wouldn't include, how it would work. Uh, we were also going to set up some, some uh, stakeholder meetings with our, our largest utility um, land property owners in town that would be the have the biggest impact on um, all of that was was curtailed with when COVID came out and uh, it, it, our plan is at this point is to once the restrictions for COVID are, re, are reduced um, then that we can go forward with that public Im implementation phase the public information get that information out to the public and disseminate that so I would think you'd want to go through that process as a next step uh, in that procedure. Well, I was just figuring that the next um, next election is going to be like four years away. So, as mm -hmm. far as I know, unless there's one before that, but I just wanted to make Every that recommendation. Every two years, we, we elect half the council. What's that? Every two years, half the council and other municipal, okay. city and county elections occur. Okay. Any other questions or comments on this subject for the director? Okay. Under Public Works New Business, under A, we have Public Works An Update. You have the floor, Director Anderson. Thank you, Your Honor. Just a quick update before we get to the items on the agenda tonight. Um, I'm just uh, pleased to let all the council and the community know that our new LaRue snowblower has been received, and we've been able to utilize that piece of equipment a couple times now, and it has worked flawlessly. Um, uh, especially with the wet heavy snows that we've experienced to date uh, it had no problem with those uh, it is performing I think above our expectations so originally we weren't expecting that piece of equipment to arrive in f until February um, but it is here and we have used it so um, that's my update for that any questions yes Alderman Stevens I'd gotten to see the old snowblower work and I got to see the new snowblower work as Brett said there is so big of a difference in the way this thing works it's the old one took a minute or two to fill it the new one is and it's filled the trucks it works like a champ good to hear please continue 
All right, uh, that's my that's for item A. That's my update for public works. Uh, okay. Item B is the chemical treatment for well number four. Right. Memo on your packet, well number four. Um, we received two bids for the chemical treatment for well number four, Cahoy Well and Pump, $211,119. Municipal Well and Pump, $314,560. I would recommend approval of the proposal from Cahoy Group to complete the chemical treatment of well number four. The cost of $211,119. This work will be paid for from our water depreciation fund, 0409. I will entertain a No one make that, that motion. Snow makes the motion. May I have a second, please? Second by Fleury. Questions, comments, or further discussion concerning the motion now on the floor? I have a question. Please proceed, Alderman Freeman. Thank you. So, Brent, this is something that we do on a regular basis to our wells, or is this something because there's a problem with this particular one in the chemical balance? Um, in this case, the last time we we had this uh, problem with well number four was back in 2016. Uh, so we do these on a case-by-case -case basis. We have to take both raw water samples and finished water samples at all of our well sites. And for well number four, we had a bad hit, or we had a hit on our raw water side. Uh, so basically there's bacteria there that's gotten to the level at this point now that need, we need to treat it with the chemicals. Unfortunately, the chemical and the dosage that we need to use to treat this is more than what the pumping equipment can handle, so we have to pull the, the pumping assembly out of the hole, treat the, treat the uh, uh, borehole, and then reinstall. So that's why the cost is what it is. Does that Thank answer you. your question efficiently, Alderman Freeman? Yes. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. Any other questions concerning the motion now on the floor? Hearing not all those in favor of favor, in favor of passing the motion will, when your name is called, signify by saying aye. Those opposed, nay. Arivolo? Aye. Brereton? Aye. Flurry? Aye. Frank? Aye. Freeman? Aye. McGee? Aye. Porter? Aye. Ratcliffe? Aye. Snow? Aye. Stevens? Aye. Ten in favor. Motion is passed unanimously. Thank you. Which brings us to item C, well number five, borehole rehabilitation. You have the floor, Director. Thank you, Your Honor. Again, memo in your packet for our well five borehole rehabilitation. We received again two bids for this work. Uh, Coyhoy Well and Pump, $72,928. Municipal Well and Pump, $137,900. I would recommend approval. Well, the proposal from Cohoy Group to complete the borehole rehabilitation of well number five at a cost of $72,928. This work will be paid for from our water depreciation fund 0409. May I have a motion to that effect? I'll make that motion. Motion by Revlo, second by Porter. Questions or comments concerning the motion now on the floor? Hearing none, all those in favor of approval will, when your name is called, signify by saying aye. Those opposed, nay. Brereton? Aye. Flurry? Aye. Frank? Aye. Freeman? Aye. McGee? Aye. Porter? Aye. Radcliffe? Aye. Snow? Aye. Stevens? Aye. Arevalo? Aye. Ten in favor? Motion is passed unanimously. Thank you. Next, uh, we have sale of old equipment being an end loader. Director, you have the floor. Thanks again. Uh, memo in your packet. Uh, street Department, we have two Caterpillar 920 end loaders. One is a 1974 model unit and the other is a 1979. Back in 2018, we purchased a new Volvo end loader with the intent to replace the 1974 model as it was five years older. However, the 1979 unit, um, the motor has a cracked block in it and is not operable. Um, a local for firm, Cordray Brothers, is interested in, in, in acquiring this loader. The unit weighs 18,600 pounds. Current scrap value ranges between $1,500 and $2,000. Cordray Brothers has offered to provide $2,500 worth of ready mix concrete in exchange for the 1979 end loader. And I would recommend selling 
that unit two Cordray Brothers for $2,500 worth of ready mixed concrete. The ordinance is attached that will be required to be passed in order to complete the sale. May I have a motion, motion to approve the ordinance? Motion to approve. Motion by Alderman Rivolo. May I have a second, please? I'll second the ordinance. Second I mean by the motion. Alderman Stevens. Questions, comments, or further discussion concerning the motion now on the floor? Hearing none, all those in favor of approval will, when your name is called, signify by saying aye. Those opposed, nay. Flurry? Aye. Frank? Aye. Freeman? Aye. McGee? Aye. Porter? Aye. Radcliffe? Aye. Snow? Aye. Stevens? Aye. Arevalo? Aye. Brereton? Aye. Ten in favor? Motion is approved unanimously. Thank you. Next, under E, uh, for your information, uh, Alderman Frank had inquired about environmentally safe salt for downtown for folks that walk their dogs. Uh, Director, you have the floor. Thank you. Memo, memo in your packet. Um, we currently use in our downtown area, it's a 50-50 mix of pellet pellets, which is a fast-acting catalyst-enhanced calcium chloride which is rated to minus 25 degrees, and we mix that with a standard sodium chloride pellet on a 50-50 basis. We found two products um, to do a comparison with our standard sodium chloride uh, pellet that's more friendly for the environment. And one of those products is straight urea, which is a fertilizer 4600 compound, and the other's uh, called Simple and Safe, which is a mixture of sodium chloride, magnesium chloride, and potassium chloride. They're still chlorides, but they're a little less uh, um, abrasive uh, than the sodium chloride alone. Uh, the two products are the same cost, and that cost uh, per application will be about $100 more than the sodium chloride that we, we are currently using. We plan on doing a side-by-side -side, um, test of the products, and we will utilize those products that give us the best results. Uh, so we've, we've made a purchase or in the process of purchasing some urea and some of the simple and safe and we'll run those um, in our next snow event that we we're salting downtown we'll, we'll do samples with mixtures of each and uh, uh, we'll go with what gives us the best results okay there's no motion needed uh, i am told by the attorney so moving on to number f which is a letter of credit reduction on plat number five of the sager corporate park director you have the floor Thank you. The developer Sager Corporate Park Subdivision Plant Number Five has requested a reduction in their letter of credit for the public improvements that they've completed to date. Review of the project indica indicates that the original letter of credit in the amount of five hundred thirteen thousand six hundred forty-six dollars fifty cents may be reduced to thirty-eight thousand one hundred fifty dollars. The reduced amount represents one hundred twenty-five percent of the cost of the remaining items to be completed. And there's actually very few items that are left. I think they have three water services and a. Uh, and a sanitary sewer access, uh, drive access. Uh, I would recommend approval of the reduction in the letter of credit for Plat 5 of Sager Corporate Park subdivision from $513,646.50 to $38,150. May I have a motion to that effect? make that motion. Uh, motion by Frank, second by Snow. Question, comments, or further discussion concerning the motion on the floor? Alderman Stevens and then Alderman Porter. Alderman Stevens, you have the floor. For information, where is Plat 5? So we know. S Sager Plat 5 was the replat of the part of the original Sager subdivision, which is across US Route 20, south of US Route 20, around adjacent to the Speedway uh, gas station. Uh, that's where they took some larger lots and made smaller lots. Alderman Porter. Yeah, I just wanted a little bit further uh, explanation on this. I'm not real familiar with the letter of credit. Uh, what is our advantage to reducing that? Well, it, it basically, the, it allows for the, the subdivision code allows for a one-time letter of credit reduction on behalf of the developer based on what work is left to remain to be done and what work has been completed. Um, so the original amount, that 513000 represented all the public improvements that needed, the value of all the public improvements that needed to be done as part of that subdivision required to do. So the developer has done the majority of them, and like I said, the 38150 represents 125% of the cost of to finish what public improvements he has. 
So he's he's made his request, and then once these improvements are done, then we'll come back to the council for final acceptance of the public improvements. Any other questions or comments concerning the motion now on the floor? Hearing none, all those in favor of approval will, when your name is called, signify by saying aye. Those opposed, nay. Frank? Aye. Freeman? Aye. McGee? Aye. Porter? Aye. Ratcliffe? Aye. Snow? Aye. Stevens? Aye. Arevalo? Aye. Brereton? Aye. Flurry? Aye. Ten in favor? Motion is approved unanimously. Thank you. Brings us to item G, the disposition of the property located at 407 West Madison Street. Director, you have the floor. Actually, I'm going to defer to the city attorney. Attorney Drella, you have the floor. You'll recall that uh, we had utilized state statute and specifically the abandoned properties portion of the demolition statute to have the court declare 407 West Madison Street abandoned. Uh, that was done through the court process by proving to the court that nobody had been residing in it for some time. Uh, it was more than two years delinquent tax bills and water service had not been utilized and things like that. So the court had granted that order, which then deeded the property to the city of Belvedere. The same process that the land bank used, but they had not chosen to take this property at that time, so we did that on our own. So title of how does the property is now in the city of Belvedere's name. Uh, the city council previously authorized utilizing grant funds to demolish the dilapidated structures on the property. Uh, so, uh, Brent, correct me if I'm wrong, but the property is now vacant. Yes, in the packet there was a picture attached uh, with snow cover and all of the of the vacant lot. And then there's also an aerial photo showing what used to be the residence and the garages that used to be on the property. So essentially, the city now owns a vacant lot um, that the council needs to decide what they want to do with it. I don't think we want to continue holding it because that means we got to cut the grass and there's no tax dollars coming out of it. Um, but the council can decide whether or not they wish utilizing their home powers to, uh, and, and the four ideas I put on the property are just ideas. I mean, there's uh, other things you could do, but you could transfer it to a nonprofit like Habitat for Humanity. We've done that in the past with some properties that we ended up with. Um, you could, uh, if the Northern Land Bank is interested in it, you could transfer the property to them. I don't know if they're interested in vacant land or if they only want land that has a house on it that's improved. Um, we could list it with a local real estate agent uh, for sale as a vacant lot for somebody to buy, either one of the adjacent landowners or somebody else that wants to build a house on it, or we can auction the property. Um, as you've heard, some of you have heard me say before, the, the Illinois Municipal Code, if you're going to sell property, has a couple different mechanisms in there to do that, both of which are quite cumbersome, one of which requires all kinds of ordinances and public hearings and um, doing an auction. The other one skips part of that process and allows you to sell it either by the city staff or through a real estate agent, but then requires you to go out and get an appraisal uh, before you do that, which I've always found kind of funny because real estate agents value land for purpose of sale all the time. Um, recently, what we've done with the city, uh, the city council has utilized its home, po home rule powers to simply uh, transfer real estate um, without necessarily having to go out and get a full appraisal on it. And sometimes we do if it's a looks like it's an expensive parcel, for example, the Manly lot or something like that. Uh, we've gotten appraisals for small parcels. We haven't always gotten appraisals because quite frankly, the cost of the appraisal, we're running about $2,000 and you're not talking about a high value piece of land. So uh, if you're gonna sell the property through an agent or through an auction, you may wanna consider using your home rule power and not doing the appraisal because the reality is it's gonna go to the highest bidder anyway. So, I'll ten questions. Alderman Frank first, and then Alderman um, Porter. Is there a time frame that we need to have this done by? No. Alderman Porter. Is there any type of a tax advantage if we donate it to the Habitat for Humanity, you know, like uh, for the city, uh, like an individual has if they donate? The city does not pay taxes, so no. Additional questions? Yes, Alderman Reeble. No, has a question. Just a moment, please. Have we approached the neighbors if they wanted to have expanded their lawn or not? We have not done that yet uh, because we wanted to come to council and see where your druthers were. 
if you were going to do it and sell it to one of the adjoining property owners, you could either do it through a realtor, we could contact them directly if you directed us to do that and, and uh, see if they want to buy it. Or, we, you know, quite frankly, you could subdivide the property and give half the lot to each one. I shouldn't say give, but sell. Um, you know, there's a lot of different ways you can skin this cat. The method you just mentioned, Alderman Arevalo, probably is more complicated than the other ones because at that point I might want to at least get some kind of an idea what the value of the land is worth as opposed to listening to a realtor who would do that for us. Anybody else? Alderman, um, no. Just, as just a question or if somebody can provide some um, guidance. Um, I was thinking that transferring the property to Habitat for Humanity, they seem to have the ability and the desire typically to jump on property and get something built in a relatively short period of time as opposed to if we sell it um, via a realtor or even by auction um, to somebody or if it winds up transferred to the Illinois Land Bank then you know we're going to potentially wind up in a situation of having to maintain the the yard um, because of not mowing it during the season. I don't know that we've ever had any issues with Habitat for Humanity lots. I'm, I'm gathering that they tend to, like I said, jump on this kind of stuff fairly quick um, and they have good community support to do so. So uh, my first thought is to pursue um, getting Habitat for Humanity to try to um, take it over. Oh, and Frank, you had a question? Oh. I was just going to ask before you adjourn. I wanted to have a question for Brent. I, I have a comment. Okay, Alderman Freeman. Alderman Freeman, please proceed. So my thoughts on this are: um, I believe that um, a good faith effort should be made to contact 415 and 405 the two properties that adjoin 407 and offer them the opportunity to buy this first whether if both of them want it then we can talk to them about splitting it or if one or the other wants it um, if neither of those two property owners are interested then um, I think the best solution is to get a hold of Habitat for Humanity I, I just think that the, the other property owners should be maybe given first dibs. Uh, Alderman Freeman, do you feel then if they want to do that, that it, we need to have it appraised so it sells at market value? Um, yeah, I don't, I mean, I don't think it's, I, I, what does an average city lot go for? Depends. It all depends on location, 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 and what it's improved with in this case. And nothing. right now prices are going up so would, would it be an idea then to look at all of these get information see if habitat I know the last habitat house took a long time to get finished about six to eight months longer than it normally does because unfortunately the, the dear folks that do that like Art Highland are having some challenges uh, Larry and, and Art uh, trying to get <coughs> things done moving around uh, being able to physically do that so it took quite a bit longer. Um, and I think it would be great to reach out to them first to see if they have an interest in it. Um, I would also think that it would be uh, appropriate to, to have the land bank tell, come to council and tell us what they would do with it and, and what that would mean to us in terms of cost or, or finance. Um, and I certainly would ask the uh, folks that live on either side if they have an interest in it, but we would need to then have them uh, pay for an appraisal uh, to find out what the, the real um, market value of the property would be. And then fin finally, if none of that seems to, f to solve the issue uh, expediently and in our favor, then I suppose we could go to auction. Does that make sense? Yeah, uh, I just, I think that, that the property owners adjoining it should have first dibs and I mean, what's an appraisal cost? Three hundred dollars, and that could just be wrapped into the um, price of the sale. Like the, that could be just included in the price of the sale. 
the the cheap Which means the property whoever buys it would in, be paying for it the cheap Alderman snow has a thought in regards to the generic price of the lot at some point the township assessor has to put a price tag on it in order for tax value even though the city may not pay any taxes they still put a value on it i would think it would um, be in our best interest just to touch base with uh, michael st angel at the uh, township belvedere township to see if they can come up with what they would have an assessed uh, value for it so then we just work off of that dollar value for the purpose of divvying it up to the neighbors and you also might check with the neighbor on the other street um, where the property um, is on the back side they might be interested in having a two through lot alderman freeman in, in response to your question on uh, appraisals of course they're each one's going to be different, have a unique price, but I don't think I've seen one come in for less than $1,000 in the last few years as far as appraisals go. Um, so it's, it's not $300. As far as rolling into the closing costs, that then becomes part of the negotiation between the city and the potential buyer. So would it be an idea to do a little bit more research on each of these and at least ask the questions of Habitat, have the land bank say how they would deal with the issue um, have a real estate, a local real estate, have the real estate uh, association weigh in to see about helping us with arriving at a, at a value uh, for this property. And we can always auction it if we don't like any of those uh, solutions. Uh, Alderman Porter? Yeah, I'd just like to make a comment. I agree with Alderman Freeman. I think that sounds like a good plan is offering the half split for the neighbors and then going with Habitat for Humanity Next. I would rather see them get it than the land bank myself. Okay. Can I can I ask a question, Your Honor? Sure. Go ahead. Go ahead, Kip. Can we uh, have a uh, consensus with the council that if we bring a proposal to have the property appraised, I believe and. Mr. Jolly, you can correct me if I'm wrong. The city is obligated to only um, profit or sell the property for 80% of the appraised value, and that would give us an idea of what the, the lot is actually worth, and then we could contact the neighboring property owners within 250 feet let them let them uh, uh, offer the city to buy the lot and then go from there and then maybe visit Habitat for Humanity and the land bank. Uh, you're only partially correct. Thought. You're only partially correct. The Illinois Municipal Code does provide that if you're going to utilize that that last method I mentioned where you obtain a, an appraisal and then list it for a real estate for sale with a real estate agent or um, just listed by the city itself you know, for sale by owner. Uh, at that point, you're only supposed to sell for not less than 80% of the appraised price. However, if you use your home rule power, that doesn't apply at all. Um, you, you're just essentially writing okay. your own statute at that point. But if you follow right. the laws as pertain to non home rule units, you cannot sell for less than 80% of the appraised price. So it being real it property, we certainly can approach, as Kip mentioned, any property owners within 250 feet and see if they have any interest in it. Because if they decide that they have an interest, they're going to have to pay for an appraisal. And there will be a value set on it there that takes us out of that loop. Um, and let's see what happens with that. And if we don't have anybody that's interested in going down that road, then let us approach Habitat and see if they have an interest in it. And if they don't have an interest in it, then let's have the land bank come and see what they would do for us. And if that does not meet with what the council wants to do, then we can put it up for auction. I think it's a number of sensible steps uh, that encompass everything that I've heard shared in, uh, on this subject. Would that be an appropriate uh, plan of action moving forward? So. Oh. Marcia, did you have something else? 
Yeah, I just, um, I'm confused that Attorney Drello thinks an appraisal is no less than $1,000 within the last two years. I've had no less than two appraisals done on two separate properties. Um, I used a local appraiser on Logan Avenue up here, and each one, um, one went through a realtor and the other one I had done privately, and they were 350 bucks. I, as, you, as I stated, the ones we've seen and we've been able to get quotes for have been right around $1,000 for small lots. Well, they, who, if, if any of the property owners are interested, they can pursue that with whatever appraiser they want to use, or if they're going to finance it through their bank, um, they can get their own appraisal, and then the bank will have an appraisal done also, and they'll pick whichever one's highest if they're going to finance it, and they'll incur the cost for both of those things. So, yes. Uh, only thing I was just uh, asked is if we do split it between two property owners, there's going to be a survey. Who's going to pay for the survey? There will have to be a survey done, and we'll either have to go through the subdivision process or use the Platt Act affidavit to effectuate the sale to the adjoining property owners. Ms. Del Rose? What about if uh, just one neighbor wants to buy the whole lot? Is that okay? That's fine. Yeah, but if you're talking about splitting it, it's going to have to be both neighbors wanting a half or a third, two, whatever way they want to do it. Because um, you can't have a remnant to be on this. It, it won't meet any codes at all. Well, since we have no time frame that is uh, a hindrance, let's approach the neighbors on within 250 feet and see if there are any of them are interested in the lot. Okay. At, the, at the same time, I will make inquiries with local appraisal firms to see what they would charge to do an appraisal on the property. So do we have consensus? Can I have a voice vote that we have consensus? No, no. no need one? Okay. All right. Thank you. I guess we have consensus, which we will move forward with that. Um, Mr. Mayor, if I may, because I believe the next item is adjournment before we adjourn. Uh, as I was sitting here, I was able to jump onto my legal research software relatively quickly. Uh, if I'm reading this correctly, as far as an advisory referendum, it is theoretically possible to try and get one so long as the resolution is adopted and filed. It looks like by the January 18th or 19th. I'd have to recount my dates backwards and <laughs> give you the exact date. Um, so it is theoretically possible, but as we indicated, probably not advisable at this point simply because we don't know what we'd be asking them. You know, we haven't even gotten to the point where we're talking about dollars and cents yet. Well, Brent, do you have the numbers together that we know what it's going to cost or that we could, you know, put to the public or, or no? We have a draft, but like I said, we haven't even gone through it. We haven't notified any of the, uh, uh, pro the major landowners uh, within the municipality that would be affected the most. So. Uh, that would be part of our due diligence that we'd want to do before we posed any question to the uh, voting public. And I believe that before we adjourn, uh, Alderman Frank had a question for Brent. Yeah, I meant to ask you for well number four and well number um, five. It's the same group, Cahoy, Well and Pump. I was wondering if you could tell me the time frame because I know they're not going to be done at the same time. Well number four will be done first, followed by well number five. In the spring? No, they'll, they'll be starting uh, as soon as council approves it next, uh, well, it's Martin Luther King holiday. So Tuesday. after Tuesday's meeting, they'll get the go-ahead to start on Wednesday. Okay, thank you. 
And that is the final comment that I had is our meeting next week will be on Tuesday. So I'll entertain a motion to adjourn. I'll make that motion. I have a motion by Arrivo, a second by Frank. All those in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Anybody opposed? Thank you, ladies and gentlemen.